Continuing on with the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast into the second segment of the show and the comments that RG3 made recently at the start of this week on Caleb Williams and what he should do, what he felt that he should do. He went on, I think, Twitter or Instagram, either of the ones, and he had a pretty long rant about it, honestly. Um, I think it was like three to four minute long video on the whole Justin Field situation first because he went on there on top of tweeting out how he felt about it. You know, he said it was a uh, robbery that the Steelers and Omar Khan, their general manager, robbed Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears in broad daylight. And he felt a certain way about it. He felt that the Steelers basically gave away nothing for it. And that whole thing turned into what the topic is now in that video where he suggested to Caleb Williams to really think about where and which team he's going to go with um, in, inevitably because he is going to be drafted probably with the one or second pick at the latest. And he really made him think about what uh, his options should be because of what the Chicago Bears had just done in their actions of just trading away Justin Fields for nothing. Because he actually said to pull in Eli Manning, and if you aren't aware, Eli Manning, Eli Manning did that basically in 2004. Just days before the draft, Eli Manning's agent, Tom Condon, told the LA Chargers that Eli would not be playing at all, and he would actually sit out the whole season if the team drafted him first overall, which is what ended up happening, but they traded him, I think, less than an hour, just a little bit over an hour that same night to the New York Giants. Um, later it came out that they didn't feel that that team, that situation would have made the most sense for Eli Manning. You could argue that that's fair because it is his career. He's, um, it is his life essentially. So if he decides to feel like that, you know, you can't blame him too much, but you know, these draft picks don't come around very often to be drafted at this high and then say, Oh, I, I don't want to play for you. Um, it, your team doesn't really fit what I'm doing. I don't like what you guys have been doing. A lot of people will look at that and be like, uh, be thinking, who does this kid think he is? Um, it sounds arrogant to, to some extent as well. Um, but Caleb Williams hasn't um, jumped or agreed with any of this. He's actually been the complete opposite and been very humble and modest about, you know, if he gets drafted to the Bears or whoever, he'll be excited regardless, like most people do. But this just caught a lot of attention because in his rant, RG3 said, um, after everything with Justin Fields, can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what, this organization has my best interest at heart and they are going to help develop me into the player I want to become, which was one of the biggest points that Caleb made at the NFL Combine when he responded to all the questions at the media availability. He said, uh, one of the biggest things that he wanted to do was uh, create a great legacy, develop, go into an organization that develops him as a player. And it's all about winning, essentially. That's the biggest thing for him. He wants to win and he wants to develop as a player and grow with the organization. It seemed the way he said it, that could be a deal breaker. And just based on the whole side that RG3 is taking uh, against anti-Chicago Bears, I'm sort of leaning towards the opposite side just because, you know, I can see where RG3 is coming from. He would know what it is like to have a discombobulated relationship with a coach and organization when he went uh, and was drafted to the Washington Redskins at the time, now the Commanders. He was in as bad a situation as you could imagine. He had a great first year, won Rookie of the Year in 2012, and then he fell out. Uh, he fell out with Mike Shanahan, the coach at the time. He eventually got dismissed, and RG3 later said that you know Mike Shanahan never wanted him on the team anyway. But when he did get fired, they brought in Jay Gruden, and the same thing basically happened with him. He didn't get along with Jay Gruden or his offensive idea philosophy as well and he ended up and he only ended up lasting three years in Washington and he was never the same after that of course he suffered that um terrible knee injury as well so that culminated with just a bad environment with the Washington 
Commanders. Um, it didn't pan out for RG3, and you know you can see why he wouldn't want that for any other quarterback, especially the talent that Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams has. But where I start to drift away a little bit from RG3 and you know really evaluate what he was saying, um, Caleb hasn't given any indications of preference of a team really. So that's the first thing. You know, if you saw some indication of Caleb being unsure or preferring one team over another, uh, you could be like, okay, this kind of makes sense. RG3 knows something potentially, just the way he's acting. But Caleb hasn't given any indication of that. And it does seem at times when Caleb does talk the way it came off of at the NFL Combine that some of his comments may have seen a bit you know, a bit overly confident by not sharing his medicals or not working out there. Um, it might have rubbed people the wrong way or caused them to look at it funny, but um, I think he's still very open and just the way he has been portrayed elsewhere. Um, I think all the team members that he's met with, all the scouts have had glowing reviews about him as a person. He seems very... Um, go with the flow, very easy going. So no one's really said anything bad about him to make you think that he would pull such um, an action like this. And comparing it back to Eli Manning, his agent communicated it, it with the, the team, the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, but because Caleb doesn't have an agent, one, it would be very awkward and very um, groundbreaking if he went up to any of these teams and was like, you know, I, I don't want to play with you, so don't even think about drafting me. If he went up and told them that, um, it would make news, unless he had his dad do it, which would even be um, worse or even more awkward if you think about it. But um, in terms of that and in terms of the actual action that RG3 referenced with Justin Fields and how they just moved on from him, you look at that and... You see it, you hear it, but it's not like they sent Justin away to some awful organization that is rebuilding and has no weapons, a bad offensive line. They, The biggest thing that the Bears and Ryan Poles wanted to do was look out for Justin Fields because they almost acknowledged that they didn't do their best of reciprocating the effort or the energy that it requires to have a successful quarterback be drafted into your organization. And they accepted that. They knew that they failed in some aspect, and they wanted to make sure they did right by Justin Fields and sent him to a place where he could still develop and grow and have success in this league, which is where they ended up sending him to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have a good young offense, a good coach system that they're building over there, a great defense. So from that part, it doesn't really add up with how he's talking about Justin Fields in that light. And as well, you look at the two players and, you know, you want to say that if you're RG3, oh, this could happen to you basically down the line. If they did it with Justin Fields, why do you think it couldn't happen with you? The dichotomy there is, you know, Justin wasn't drafted number one overall. People might view Caleb Williams as a better quarterback anyway. So from that aspect and saying that... um trying to compare them in that way it's not almost the same it's not the same because they most likely won't be treated as they have been you know Justin was middle of the first round almost pick 11 so if you were talking about Trevor Lawrence and this happened to Trevor Lawrence you could see it there because the Jaguars obviously invested a lot in him but because you're talking about Justin Fields the talent level might not be the same so I think Caleb won't really receive that treatment with them because he is being drafted number one overall most likely and to just throw away a number one overall pick just like that I think it would look way worse for the Bears than it does for Caleb Williams um so that's one thing and the final thing about it is um he's getting drafted to a better team so it's not like um, it will be the same situation with Justin where he has to carry the load and be responsible for everything that this team is required to have happen to have success. They brought in Keenan Allen. They brought in DeAndre Swift. They have DJ Moore. Cole Komet is a very solid tight end. They're building this thing around Caleb Williams essentially because they've really made it no secret that they're interested in him heavily. 
they're, they've always had meetings with them. They've taken him out to dinner, had long conversations with him. So you wouldn't do that if you weren't at least a little bit concerned with making sure he has success in this league. And that's really the difference with him and Justin Fields. Essentially, um, they're actually taking the right steps to make sure this young man comes into the best situation possible for him to have success because you also have to think about it. Um, there's already this um, narrative around Ryan Poles missing out or deciding to miss out on C.J. Stroud trading back out of the number one pick last year um, and giving it to the Carolina Panthers. And if this situation were, weren't to work, who do you think would be the first person out the door? Do you think they'd move on from Caleb Williams or Ryan Poles and Matt Everflus? It You know, it's clearly those two guys, so they have to make sure that this project does work, and it has to work for them because, you know, or else they'd be out of a job, they'd have to look at other things, and then it all just resets after that, and they don't want that to happen. I'm sure, it, for the looks of it, from the outside looking in, it looks like Ryan Poles really is determined to improve this team and make it a competitive team in a wide-open NFC that I think is very intriguing, and there is an opportunity there because... You look at the best team in that division. Is it the Lions? Yeah, but are they going to have a sort of um, hangover after the best season uh, of their franchise? You look at the Packers. Was last season just a fluke-ish? Is Jordan Love really that quarterback that could carry this team going forward? Does he have the support, real support around him? There's questions there. You could have questions there. And, you know, this is... Not wide open, but you see a little glimpse of hope there that if the Bears can figure it out with the quarterback, maybe they'll be in tough games. And if you're fortunate enough to have those fall your way, you could gain confidence from the fans and have even more support in what you're trying to build in this whole project that you're trying to build. And just the last thing I'll say to kind of close this segment out is that RG3 wants to mention or did mention them just moving on from Justin Fields, a player transaction. That doesn't seem so bad to me. What would seem worse to me would be if they decided to keep Justin Fields and they were trying to, they said they were trying to build a project around Justin Fields, but they were stingy with the money or they were hesitant to pay Justin Fields. And that was the reason why they didn't want to keep him. That would be more alarming to me than just deciding to move on from Justin Fields because they failed in some aspect. Um, they didn't support him enough, so they decided it was best for him and the organization to move on. That doesn't seem as bad as the money aspect. You know, they just don't want to pay him. That would seem more risky to me if I was Caleb Williams because, you know, they're, ha they're having a hesitancy to pay a top guy who has proven to have some glimpse of hope. And if you think that you're better than Justin Fields, there would still be that doubt that oh, are they going to repay me for putting in this much work and helping this team win? That would be more alarming to me. But the way that the Bears handled it, I thought it was best for everybody um, and how it ended out. Everyone's always going to go back to the six-round pick. Oh, they got nothing, nothing for them. But the way the market fell out and the way it was looking, the Bears took a decision. They have to live with it now. And, you know, it, it's funny when... You look at this just in hindsight. If Caleb Williams plays great and this team is really good, exciting this coming season, no one's going to remember who um, who traded for Justin Fields and what they gave up for. Uh, if he has great success, that's awesome uh, with the Steelers. I'm hopeful of that, hopefully, because I'm a Steelers fan. But no one's going to remember what they traded for Justin Fields if Caleb's amazing, outstanding, can live up to his full potential. This is just going to go under the rug. And if he plays great, there's no reason why the Bears would move on from him anyway. So I think it was a bit overblown the way RG3 is and very animated. I'm a fan of RG3, but maybe this take was a little bit um, very emotional uh, from RG3. So uh, I wanted to react to it. It happened at the beginning of the week, and I just didn't have time to uh, talk about it. Uh, but that's where I'm at with this whole issue, I guess, of telling the Bears not to draft you. Um, you'll end up there most likely anyway. So moving on and moving on from that topic, 
I will be going more into another prospect in this draft, Marvin Harrison, and him taking the um, unprecedented decision to not work out at his pro day. Already skipped the combine now. He hasn't really been in action in front of people um, really this whole offseason since Ohio State last played. I'm going to get into that as well as Stephen Jones giving his reasons why the Cowboys have been so laid back and not really being too active in the free agent market. So stick around. You're not going to want to miss all those stories coming up right here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. Looking for